Welcome to another Python GIS tutorial today, guys. Today we're going to be covering how to reproject a raster using Python. So I have the same DEM that we've been using for this whole series or most of this series here in front of me. And I'm just going to open up the properties in QGIS um, and go to the information. And you can see that my CRS, my coordinate reference system, is EPSG 26912 which is NAD 83 UTM zone 12 north. Okay, And what we want to do in this tutorial is we're just going to reproject this uh, into a different coordinate reference system and add it to our map. And we'll do that all using Python. And so when we're done you should be able to, to use Python to automate reprojection of rasters on your own. So let's uh, open up our Python console and we're just going to start by setting the file name to this raster which is my c temp elevation ned 10 mtif okay and the way we're going to do this is we're going to use gdal warp to do this okay and I'm just going to pop over to the documentation for gdal warp and so I have it pulled up here and if you just google gdal.warp python you should get to a page similar to this and so you can see here um, I have my warp options here so warp one or several data sets is this tool here and I have my warp options and the warp options can be specified directly uh, in here okay so let's just click on warp here and we have our arguments. So we have our output, data set, name, or object, um, and then an array of data sets, objects, or file names for a data set, object, or file name. So this is, what we wanna, this is our output, our destination, and this is our source. So the source is the one we want to warp. The output is the one we want to get warped. So let's just go in um, and specify those in our script really quick. Um, so the, let's make an output here. Um, and we'll just, uh, let me just find the projection we want to warp this to real quick. And so I'm just going to pop over to the internet and I'm going to search for EPSG WGS84. We'll convert to WGS84. Um, and it's going to tell us, if we go to spatialreference.org, it will tell us our EPSG is 4326. So I'm just going to grab the 4326. Go back to QGIS and paste that into my file name so I know exactly which projection it is. Okay, and now I can specify my output file name and my file name. And now is where I'm going to put my arguments in. So let's go back and just take a look at our documentation over here. Okay, so let's take a look down here. So we have our source spatial reference. Um, which we don't need to specify because it can grab that from the file. And then we're going to specify our output spatial reference. Okay, so let's go over here. And we're just going to do put DST SRS equals EPSG colon, paste our EPSG in there, and that should take care of it take the spaces out of that. Let's just go back and double check our arguments. DST, SRS, oops, wrong thing. And let's go back to QGIS. And let's go ahead and run this and see if this works. Okay, oh, GDAL is not defined, so we need to import GDAL. And let's run, okay. Oh, and I didn't add it to the map, so let's go ahead and go back to our browser. And we can see it's added to this file name here, this new file. Let's add it in. Okay. Let's close it back to our layers. Now, let's open up the information here. And you can see that our coordinate reference system is now EPSG 4326. Let's take a look at some other things here. So our width is 1265 and our height is 1255. Let's look and see 
if that's the same as the other one. So 1265, 1255. Okay, let's take a look. And you can see that there are, our width and height are different in this one because when it changes the projection, the, the units of measure change and it has to recalculate the rows and columns. Okay, so if we want to keep the rows and columns the same, we can actually do that in warp. So let's go to plugins and back to our Python console. And um, I'm just going to do iface.add vector, or sorry, add raster layer. Come on. Man, why is it not popping up? Sorry, iface.add. There it is, add raster layer. Um, and then we should even give our file name, which is going to be our output file name. So that will add automatically now, and I can remove this one. Let's see, there we go. Okay, so now what we want to do is we're going to want to put in the number of rows and columns. So let's go over here to um, row one to our uh, documentation and so there should be our dimensions that we need to figure out here. Guys I apologize when I did look at the destination as I was looking at the vector translate options we need to scroll up to the warp options. Um, luckily it's the same name here. Um, we want to look for our width and height, so we're going to input the width and height parameters to keep the number of pixels, overall pixels, and the number of rows and columns the same. So let's go back over here. So that means we're going to want uh, a width is going to be the number of rows, the number of columns, sorry, and our height is going to be the number of rows. And so I'm just going to open this one back up so we can get the right numbers here. And so our width, 1065, height, 1418. So we got 1065, height, 1418. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll click run and that will add the new raster in. So run, there's our new raster. Let's make sure that it's, uh, the dimensions are the same as we specified. So let's open those properties up by double clicking. And sure enough, our width is 1065 and our height is 1418. And your pixel size um, is going to change accordingly. Um, so you can see here that our pictures or pixels are wider than they are tall. And we can actually just take a look at this. We can scroll in. And if we zoom in, probably on that edge over here, get into the pixel level. And you'll notice that when I turn this off, Let's actually do this. We turn this one on. Let's put that one on top. You can see that it widens out just a little bit there. These pixels aren't exactly the same. Okay, so you can see that it has been reprojected. Back to the console. Okay, so I'm going to run back to the warp options real quick. We're not going to go through all of these, but you can see that you can output it in a different format. Um, you can set a specific bound, um, so a specific extent you want to output it for. Instead of setting um, the, the width and height, you can actually set uh, X and Y resolutions, and it will be in the target SRS, so that that's the destination SRS. Let's actually go ahead and try that. So if I wanted to make this, um, let's do X res equals, let's make it a tenth of a degree, and I think that needs to be capitalized, um, in both directions, y res equals 0.1. I'll just go back and verify the parameter name. Yep, x res, y res. Okay, um, let's go ahead and click run on this, and I'll remove this first. Okay, so now, if we open our attributes here, you can see that we only have a height and a width of one because my 
that's all that my uh, my resolution allows for. So let's actually go back and make this 0 0.01 and 0 0.01. And let's see if that does anything. Remove the layer and run it here. Okay, and there you can see that now we've resampled that to um, 13 by 13. So if I close that, let's slide this out of the way, and I zoom out to my raster layer, uh, you can see that it definitely looks a lot different now than it did uh, at the beginning because I, when I reprojected that, I resampled it down to a different size. So anyway, that's just a quick rundown, guys, of how you can use the warp function, the GDAL warp function, to reproject a raster from one coordinate reference system to another. Um, I, hope you, I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, if you have other suggestions for videos, please leave a comment and let me know. Um, I try to get to those as I can. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.